Dr. Saxon and Reese comment on whether a safe injection site would work to save lives. They've had them in the city of Vancouver for quite a long period of time. And some of the advantages are that uh, people can, if, they're, if people are going to inject drugs, they can go to a place where there's a nurse on duty, so if they should happen to overdose, uh, there'd be someone there to help resuscitate them. Secondly, they can go to a place that will provide them with uh, clean needles um, and the proper apparatus to do a safer injection. And then, of course, they're not using their drugs in public places where a lot of people would be exposed to that, children's maybe seeing that and that sort of thing. And then finally, that can be an, uh, an entryway to treatment. People go to these safe injection sites and there will be a lot of information about would, wouldn't you like to get treatment? We can help you if you want to, here's where you can go. So I think for all those reasons, um, they, they are advantageous and in Vancouver they have shown that they did uh, reduce the overdose rate. Yeah, well all the points are correct. Uh, the, the issue, it's really, in my view, more of a political decision than a medical decision. From a purely medical standpoint, having an array of treatments that uh, can either treat, like safe injection sites, really are designed to treat the relatively few, if you look at the world, of people with opiate use disorder. People who, even when good treatment like methadone and buprenorphine and naltrexone, even when those are available, won't do those. So, so that's a little, imagine a pyramid. We're really looking at a, a small 5% five, 5 something like that of people with opiate use disorder who despite having available access won't do that. And it becomes a way to try to engage those folks that are probably pretty severe and are probably the ones that might have pretty bad medical things too that we end up paying for anyway. So in that sense, uh, you're, you're designing a system to treat uh, with, with uh, the injection sites this small fraction of people when you have now 95% of the rest of people and what we know from data is about one out of 10 of those people is actually getting opiate system stabilizers like buprenorphine. So you can treat 100 buprenorphine people for about the same cost that you can treat one of these safe injection site people. So from a political standpoint and from a health economic standpoint, it's not like we have endless amount of money. If you have this amount of money, where are you gonna put it? To these five, I'm gonna treat five people here or I'm gonna treat 500 people over here for about the same cost. That's the sort of the health economics part. From a political point of view, there's huge stigma in opiate use disorder, heroin addiction. You know, the public is sick and tired of this. And when the average Joe out there who's working hard and taking care of their kids or whatever says, oh, now they're gonna give them, gonna help them to inject heroin, I think that paints the whole system with a really ugly colored brush. And when you're trying to expand treatment into primary care, and that's the biggest growth for buprenorphine is into primary care. So I'm a, sort of afraid that if you put a lot of your political capital into doing something that you know creates huge stigma, uh, why would you do that when you could spend the same amount of money treat 100 times more people and not create the stigma.